What is the cause of war? And how can it be stopped? Or how can our wars be won? These are the life lessons that we'll learn from the 19th star of Vedic astrology, Uttara Ashada, Ultimate Victory. In this series, Life Lessons of the Vedic Nakshatra, we'll discover how life really works by exploring the 27 constellations through the mystical Sanskrit words of the Vedic Nakshatra Sutra. Welcome back to our series of videos on life lessons from the stars of Vedic astrology, life lessons from the nakshatras. We're up to the 19th installment in our series. So today we're going to be talking about the nakshatra named Uttara Ashada, which is a name that means ultimate victory. So the themes for this nakshatra are going to be war, victory, conquest, mastery, like that. As we always do, we study the Sanskrit sutra about this nakshatra that's been given to us by ancient sages in a book called Taittiriya Brahmana, in a section called Nakshatra Sutra. And so let's start off by actually hearing the Sanskrit as I've recorded it with some of the students from the online Nakshatra Sutra course that I did. Vishvesham Devanam Uttaraha Apichaya Parastad Apichitam Avastad Vishvesham So the Sanskrit here reads Vishvesham Devanam Utraha Abhijayat Parastat Abhijitam Avastat. Let's talk about the individual words that are important here so that we can get our minds wrapped around what this statement is. And then we'll go on to think about the life lesson that it teaches us. Okay. So, the first significant word in the sutra is Vishvesham. Vishva means everything. Vishvesham is in the sixth tense, so it means of everything. The second important word in the sutra is Deva, Devanam. Devanam is plural, and that's going to be important in the life lesson. Uh, so, what the word Deva means, usually it means gods, right? So, De Vishvesham Devanam means the gods of everything, usually. That's the, like the common surface meaning. Deva is used for gods because Deva actually means bright. It's based on the word Deepa. And Deepa means illumination. So when something has a lot of brightness to it, it gives off a lot of illumination, it's going to be called Deva. Those who possess a lot of illumination are known as Deva. What you should really know, what's really important to know about the Vedic metaphor with light is that light is the thing which enables you to perceive. So Deva means brightness, the light of perception, the ability of perception. So here in the sentence, we can say Vishvesham Devanam, and yes, it means the gods of everything. But who are the gods of everything? The gods of everything are you and me. The gods of everything are the beings who perceive everything, the beings who light up everything with their perception, with their consciousness. So in Sanskrit, that's called the Atmas. The Atmas are the individual conscious beings. The individual conscious beings emit their conscious light onto the world, the Vishva. So the gods of Uttarashada are you and me. This is a very interesting nakshatra for that reason. The, go the gods are very grassroot everywhere. Gods. Conscious living entities who are aware of the world. Now the fourth important word is Abhijaya. Abhijaya Prasthat. It needs, Uttarashad needs Abhijaya. Abhijaya is based on the word Jaya which means conquer. And Abhi means like really conquer. Totally conquer. Totally master. And the kind of grammar that it's in with Abhijayat means like the act of conquering, the act of mastering, doing it, actually conquering it, conquering and mastering, doing that action of conquest. Uh, so this is what Uttarashada needs. It needs to conquest. And why does it want to conquest? Because Abhijit, the final word that we need to study, 
in the sutra. Abhijit means the victory. It's the same word as Abhijaya, but instead of being in a present, present, per, you know, ongoing present tense, it's in the past perfect, a, a completed in the past tense. So Abhijit means the thing that has been won, the person who has won, the guy who has become supreme, the the victor. So that's the translation of the of the sutra. The perceivers of everything need to engage in conquest to achieve victory. Seems like a very simple statement. So the most significant thing that this um, sutra teaches us, it summarizes the whole Vedantic philosophy about who we are and what we're doing in this world. We who are the perceivers of the universe, the Vishvesha Devana, we who perceive the universe, we want it. Can you deny it? You can't deny that, can you? So when you perceive something, you develop either a like or a hatred towards it. So if you like something, then you want it. And if you hate something, then you want to get rid of it. From consciousness perceiving things, there's a struggle that ensues. When we perceive something, I perceive an ice cream cone, and then I want it. Then I go to pick it up. But then my sister also perceived that ice cream cone, and she wants it. And she goes to pick it up, and we get there at the same time, and what happens? We fight. Well, that's the same thing that happens when I perceive oil in Iraq, and the people in Iraq also perceive oil in Iraq. And then we fight about it. So it's the same thing, whether it's a huge war or a tiny war, it's all the same, same principle. There's two conscious entities, or more, two groups of conscious entities, perceiving some resource in reality, wanting to get rid of it, or wanting to, to get more of it, and then fighting about that, trying to control it. And that's what this Uttarashad is all about. Trying to control, trying to master things, trying to get the power to make things the way you want them to be. So, the sutra includes the word devanam being in plural, right? Deva is a singular, means a god or a bright one or enlightened one, a perceiver. Devanam is plural. It means many perceivers. So that's the key. This is why war happens. Because the devanams, the people like me and you, think of ourselves in plural. We think of ourselves as distinctly separate entities. It's called separatism or pritakdrishti. The, 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 sutra, the Vedanta and the Puranas, they call it pratakdrishti, a separatist way of seeing the world. It's a very inferior way of seeing the world because it leads to war. I see the ice cream, my sister sees the ice cream, I see that my sister is not me. So if she gets the ice cream, I'm not psyched. But if I get the ice cream, I'm psyched. So that whole warfare, that whole battle that happens as a result of that wanting that ice cream only happens because I think that my sister's interests are fundamentally different from my interests because we're fundamentally different people. But that is an incorrect, a partially correct, an incorrect perception of reality to think that the self and one's self-interests are entirely divorced from the other selves and their self-interests. So the way to stop war is to stop the excessive plurality in how you think of yourself. To stop the separatism in how you think of yourself. You don't think of yourself as separate from your spouse. That will stop your wars in your marriage. You don't think of yourself as separate from your children. That will stop the struggles. So And so on and so forth. You think of yourself as a part of your, your marriage, a part of your family, a part of your neighborhood, a part of whatever it is that you're in. And therefore, whatever is good for the neighborhood also has a good effect on me. That ends the warfare. That's, the, that's what Uttarashad is, that's what the sutra of Uttarashad is teaching us. That's a very important life lesson. So what I write in, our, in, in the book is, the most significant life lesson we get from the sutra is that as long as we conceive of ourselves in plural, Devanam, we will wind up in some form of warfare, fighting to control the resources of the world. It's only when consciousness finds a singular unifying center that it can fully exist without warfare and struggle. Other, you can, 
just with regular conventional vision, you can see like, okay, my family, I'm invested in my family, but I'm not invested in that other family. So that's just a, a, a more, a bigger vision of pratakdrishti, a bigger version of separatism. It's, it's better than the tiny one where I'm totally different from everybody, but it's still ha you'll still get war. It just won't be you against the world, it'll be your group against the other groups. And then the groups can get bigger and bigger, but they still fight with each other. The only way to truly get peace is to find a singular unifying center to everyone, something that everyone is a part of, something that unifies everybody. That the Vedas describe as Paramatma. It describes the self or you as Atma, which is a special, unique individual who can perceive. And it describes that unifying self, that central self, as Paramatma, which means ultimate self. When we discover our ultimate self at the root of all selves, then we can have peace and not compete with other people and not struggle with them for mastery. Okay? That's the lesson from Uttarshad, but it's, it's very, very, very lofty, isn't it? So I'll give you a lef less lofty life lesson also that you can get from this sutra. So let's also talk about how we're going to win our wars. Maybe you're not ready to give up your wars, but at least you would like to win them. So if you want victory, you got to fight. That's the lesson. Seems simple, right? But sometimes you have to be told simple things because you overlook them. See, the word is abhijaya and abhijitta. They're the same words. They're just in, they're just have a different grammar. One means present tense and one means past tense. So what the sutra is saying is, hey, if you want to be successful, you better be successful. Like in Sanskrit, it's easier. It's saying if you want abhijaya, then you better do abhijaya. If you want to be the victor, then you better fight now. You can't be afraid that you're going to get a boo-boo. You can't be afraid that you're going to get ex be seen to be weak. You can't be afraid that you're going to lose. You will. You have to get out there and fight if you want to succeed. If you're afraid to step forward, this is one thing that Uttarashad is very good at, interpretively speaking. If it functions well, it's not afraid to step forward and meet a challenge. Uttarashad comes, comes out and shines when there's a challenge presented. You're going to challenge me? You're going to fight me? Let's do this. That's Uttarashad. Um, but if you're the one who's like, oh no, I got challenged. Let me run away. I'm so scared. I don't like challenges. I don't like arguments. You're not going to win anything. So if you want to be a victor, a winner, then you better be a fighter. If you don't want to be a, a fighter, then don't try to be a victor. Okay? Try to be a harmonizer. All right, but the sutra tells us one other thing. That it also tells you the best way to fight. Because it's using the words Vishvesha Deva. Right? So it's, it's telling you the best way to fight. That It's saying you don't really win fights by muscle power and firepower. You actually win fights, even if it's the army battling another army. They don't actually win the fights with their tanks and bombs. They win the fights with their intelligence, strategy, and awareness of what the other person is doing what the other army is doing. That's how you win a war. So it's saying Vishvesham Deva. You need to be Deva, aware of Vishva, everything. The more aware you can become, the more likely you are to be able to excel, to be able to conquer, to be able to win. All right, so I hope those life lessons are super useful, both in the short-term practical sense of your conventional day-to-day life and struggles in the material world and also in the long-term sense of your ultimate goals and your ultimate best interest. Don't miss the life lessons from the other 26 star clusters of Vedic Astrology. Subscribe to my channel now. And keep your ears up for announcements about the release of this book and the next online classes about it. Thanks.